Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew this cold shoulder booboo -boo kaftan with you. So if you look at this dress, you can see it's a cold shoulder kaftan and it also has a yoke attached to it. Then we have some strips by the side of it and the extension is with a, not a plain fabric as well so if this is what you want to learn in this class i will encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial to learn how this dress is made like this it's actually a butterfly uh, dress anyway so if you have not subscribed to this ch channel please kindly subscribe and stay till the end of this tutorial to learn more thank you so these are the fabric I'm going to make use of for this tutorial. So the upper piece of this um, dress is lace. It's a lace fabric. So I'll be using this lace, uh, shiny lace fabric for the upper part. So you can use any lace of your choice. I have half yard right here. And I have a um, half yard of net or two to line the yoke for the lace i have three yards of kampala fabric right here so you can use any fabric of your choice and i have two yards of crepe to complete the lower piece and to line the size of it so i'm using two yards because i don't want to start joining any part of the butterfly part so i just want it to run straight so i have two years here the remaining part of the fabric i'll be using it for another project so now the first we are going to do is to cut out our yoke then we are going to line it with our two so i'm going to fold my lace fabric first i'm placing it at the first fold then the second fold then that is my center front and I'm going to make a border line on the shoulder line so I'll be able to take my vertical measurements. So this is my border line. So I'm going to place my tape on the border line right now. I'm going to take the measurement of my chest line at 9 inches. After my chest line, I'm going to take 2 inches below my under bust line. 2 inches below my under bust line. My under bust is 14. I marked my length at 16. That is the length of the yoke. So, I'm going to highlight the lines right now. So, the lines have been highlighted, as you can see. That is my chest line I'm highlighting. I believe you are seeing my chalk lines. I'm going to repeat my shoulder divided by 2. My shoulder is 15. Divided by 2 will give me 7.5. So, I'm going to mark 7.5. I'll bring that 7.5 here too. Okay, I'll mark 7.5. My shoulder divided by 2 is 7.5. I'll mark 7.5. Then add half an inch for seam allowance, which will make it 8 inches. I'll mark 8 inches. I'll pick up the 8 inches to the chest line and mark. Then I'm going to make a straight line. From that point and connect my straight line okay so the next thing I'm going to mark is my neckline my neckline is 3.5 that is the width of my neckline and the neck depth for the back I'm using one and half and the neck depth for the front, I'm using four inches. So I'm connecting three and a half to one and a half, and connecting three and a half to four inches. I believe you are seeing my chalk line. So three and a half is the neck width for front and back. 
one and a half is the neck width for back and four inches is the neck width ne, ne, uh, neck width for front so there's a little keyhole of about two inches I will mark the two inches for the keyhole so the keyhole is actually a stylish keyhole so on the neckline I'll come in by a quarter of an inch just a quarter I don't want it to open too much a quarter is 0 0.25 and I'm going to make a curve to that two inches with it like this I believe you saw what I did here I came down by two inches came in by 0 0.25 and then connected it I don't want it to be too open but you can do half an inch then after that my shoulder drop is one inch i'll mark then i'll connect to the neckline i'll connect to the neckline then i'm going to take the midline from here i'll measure i have eight inches i'll measure midline at four inches so from the mid arm hole here i came in by 0 0.75 and i marked that is for the front arm hole and for the back arm hole i marked half an inch so just like you make your arm hole just connect 0 0.75 which is the back to the tip of the shoulder and also connect the front 0 0.75 to the tip of the shoulder as well I believe my line is visible because this fabric and the chalk almost look the same and this is the best chalk I can use for this marking so just follow my lines so after that is done I'll place my ruler on the 0 0.75 which is the front line to touch the line the end of the 16 inches I marked and then I will shift it to the 0 0.5 to also touch the 16 inches. So when cutting them, I'm going to cut them separately. So that is it. So if you want the this to stop at your underbust, you can go ahead and stop it at the underbust. So this is my underbust. So if I want to connect this, I'll just come straight to the underbust and connect. Okay, but I just want it to go a little beyond. Or what I can do, instead of it to go down too more, because I'm seeing it very, very down here. So I'll just place my tape and mark 15 inches. Okay, let me just do, my underboss is 14. I just added 1 inch. Let me have it as 15 instead of uh, the 16 inches. Okay, so it's all by choice anyway. So from here, I'll now connect here. Please don't let the lines confuse you. I'm sorry about that. Then from this other one, I'll repeat the same thing I did right now. So I'm going to cut out the yoke. So in cutting out the yoke, I added 0 0.5 inch on the back neckline and on the shoulder seam line. So I'm going to follow the line of the back, okay, which we came in by 0 0.5. Then I'll cut it directly to the center front. So after cutting out the back yoke, I'm going to take the back from the inside, outside, okay, just take it out so you'll be able to cut out the front so for the front I also add 0 0.5 inch on my neckline and I'll cut the neckline for the front then I'll also cut out the keyhole part of it that is what I'm doing right there then I'll now come over to the armhole and cut out the armhole line so this is what my yoke looks like right now. This is the front yoke looking so beautiful. And this is the back yoke as well. So this is how it's going to look like before I turn with my nets. So I've cut out the... Um, I have my nets here, as you can see. So this is the nets. 
so I've already pinned everything so I pinned all the edges all the edges I pinned everything and I'm going to sew everything so the only part I'm going to leave after sewing is the shoulder line okay so I'll go to my machine now I'm going to sew both back and front then turn it and give it a good press so after sewing I'm going to reduce the neckline of my yoke okay so I am trimming it out although the net I'm going to I place the net without a cutting so just place the lace on top of the net so that at the end of the day you now cut out the two so you can see me cutting out the two right now so I'll continue to reduce the neckline as you can see but be careful of your stitches I'll also reduce the sides of the stitching so it's not that too bulky when I want to turn it so I will do that for the front yoke I'll also do that for the back yoke as well so at the end of the day I will turn it from the shoulder line because I left the shoulder line open so just keep it open like that so I've turned the front I'll also turn the back as well so after sewing the yoke this is what you will have so i've sewn it and i've turned it to the right side so i totally left here open that was where i turned it from like i said before so the shoulders are open the same with the front as well so i'm going to set the yoke aside then we'll cut the men dress so I'll come in with my fabric. So like I said, the fabric I'm working with is a Kampala fabric. So this fabric now is three yards. From here to this other end is three yards. So, but I'm going to fold it on the yardage part to the length of my, of the dress. So the length of the dress is at 45 because you are going to attach crepe below it. So I just measure from here to be sure I have my length at 45. So I have it at 44. So I'll just extend it a little more. So here I have my length right now. So I'll just go ahead and pick up this edge and match it up this way. So that is going to serve as a shoulder line. So we'll start taking the measurements. So here is my center front which I folded and that is my shoulder line. Okay, so I'm going to place my tape right now on the shoulder. Just place your tape on the shoulder and take the measurement of first, take six inches and mark six inches. That is the yoke line at six inches. Next is my hip line at 29 inches. I'm going to mark it as well. Then I'll take the length of this dress at 45, after which we are going to attach the plain crepe to it. So... The next is the shoulder line right now. So right now, we want to come over to the horizontal measurement. So the first horizontal measurement I'm going to take is my shoulder line. So my shoulder divided by 2 is 7.5 because my shoulder is 16, is a 15. So I'll mark it at 7.5. From that seven and a half, I'm going to measure my sleeve line. So I have my sleeve line at 11. I'm going to mark my sleeve at 11. So it depends on if you want to make do of the whole of this as your sleeve. But for me, I'll just leave it at 11 inches from my shoulder. So after that is done, next is to take the measurement of the neckline. So I'll place my tape at the center front, center back once again. And I'm going to take the wideness of my neckline. So the wideness of my neckline is 9 inches. 
so I'll mark nine inches and then I'm going so I'll mark nine inches so I'm going to connect this nine inches to the six inches like this then after connecting this to this the next I'm going to do I'll just come in from here by four inches or four and a half inches then at that point of four and a half inches I'm going to connect this neckline like a U because this is where the sleeve is going to be so just go ahead and connect it to blend with this point so it's going to look like a sweet hat so it's not even there uh, is at about five and a half inches so what I'm trying to get is this curve here this curve because this is where the sleeve is going to be so make sure you make this curve like that I just want to make little uh, um, adjustments it, I look at this but it looks so deep so just make it a little bit shallow there's no actual measurement for it anyway just a little bit shallow so I will take off this one. We are working with the inner part of it. I believe you understand. So you now blend it to the neckline. So if I'm cutting now, I'm going to cut the shallow part. Please don't go that deep, okay? After marking out the neckline, I'm going to mark out my hip circumference divided by 4, which is 12 inches. Now the remaining part of the sleeve, I'll take the measurement. I have 3 and half. So that three and a half, I'll place it back on the hip line and mark three and a half. So I'm trying to create a straight line. I'll also mark it on the hem line. So with my ruler, I'm going to cut it out. So this is the line I'm going to cut out for my booboo. So if you want to take the whole dress, it's also okay. You can make your sleeve longer. So I'm going to cut now. So this is how your neckline will look like after you are done cutting it. So I've gone ahead to use my bias to tape it. So you just use your bias and finish it up as you can see. After the neckline, we are going to take the length of this booboo gown from the hem. I'm going to take it to the shoulder. So here I have 46. So multiply by 2 will give us 92 inches. So this 92 inches, I have already cut out my strip for it. So the length of this strip is also 92 inches. And I cut two pieces of it as you can see. So the width of my strip is 6 inches. So I went ahead and folded in 0 0.5 inch for both of them. That is the part I'm going to use to top stitch. So I gave it a good press, as you can see. So now I'm going to flip to the wrong side of this dress. So this is the wrong side of it. Then place the part that is not folded. Place it right side to the wrong side and stitch 0 0.5 inch from the beginning to the end. We are going to use the folded part to top stitch it. So I'm done stitching on the wrong side to the right side so this is my stitches so i'm going to turn it to the right side this is the right side and this is the half an inch which i ironed so i'll just bring it here right on top of this part then i will secure with my pins i'll just hold it down with my pins then I'm going to top stitch on it after holding it with my pin. So I'm done with the strip right now. So I've sewn it and ironed it inside and outside. So I did that to the end of the dress as you can see. So, so this is my yoke and we want to finish up the neckline for the yoke. So I want to share one secret with you on how to go about the joining of this same line. 
So here is the front yoke and this is the back yoke. So what I did was I opened here. So I will advise you when you are stitching, just leave about four inches or five inches so your hand will be able to pass in through here. So I'll pass my hand now and this is the right side of the yoke. I'm going to pick this into it like this. Okay, so this is what I did. You just pick this like this into it. Then, and bring it out from here. So when you bring it out from here, you align it to the yoke, to the neckline. So you can go ahead and secure with your pin. Then I'll go over to the machine and stitch. I'm going to stitch and trim off. So let me do that. So after stitching, this is what I have. So I'll reduce the seam. As usual, we always reduce the seam of our of the yoke. So I've reduced the seam. So now I'm going to turn it to the right side. So if you look at it, you can see the back is neat. The front is neat too. So for this other side, for this other side, I'll also pass through the opening. So just make the opening like four inches to do that. So I'll pass through here again, as you can see. Then I'm going to pick this. Make sure it's laying right, right side to right side before you pick. So I'll just take it in like this and repeat the same process so i'm going to arrange it and stitch and cut all right so i'm done sewing the neckline you can see it's actually looking very beautiful so this open part now i just stitch on it as you can see i stitched it very neatly okay so the yoke is very much ready as you can see right now to to be attached to the main dress so this is the front part of the dress. I'm going to open it up like this. So if you look at this part, that is the center part of the dress. So I just go ahead and bring my yoke. So I place my yoke at the center. I'm going to place it at the center. So make sure this part is exactly at the center of this. So I will arrange it, then drag it a little bit down. So here you have to come in at least, you know this part, this part, when we took the measurement of from here to here, when we were drafting, it was four inches. So you have to drop it exactly at four inches. Then secure with your pin. So I'll secure it with my pin. While this part is at the center, I'll also secure it with my pin. Then coming over to this part, I'll still take the measurement at four inches. So I will know exactly where to drop this. So it's at four inches. I'll also secure with my pin. So I'm going to repeat the same thing for the back, then hold it all around with my pin. So now I'm going to stitch on this line to hold the yoke to the dress. I'll do that for the front as well. So I'm done stitching as you can see right here. The dress is actually very ready. So we are going to finish up the hem part of this by cut, taking the measurement of the down part of it. We'll use the measurement to cut the crepe okay so i measured 40 inches for it so my measurement is 40 inches on the hem so i've already placed my fabric on fold so i'm taking the measurement of the width 
where I'm going to attach. So I have 40 and I added 5 inches. So I'm cutting at 45 inches. Okay. So this is it. Then I'm going to place my tape at the length of the booboo, which I've already made, and measure 60 inches. So I will mark it at 62 inches because I want it to flow very well on the floor. So I'm going to cut out from this line of 62 inches I just made for this dress. So I've gone ahead to attach to the main fabric and I even top stitch on top of it. So I left one inch as you can see for the folding of the plain part. So you have to leave one inch. I did the same on the other side as well. So I'm going to take my actual measurement right now from the shoulder to be sure my measurement is exactly at my desired length so i place my tape on the shoulder and i'm going to take the measurement i desire okay i've gone ahead to weave that part and i also hemmed it with my hemming gum so i'm going to shape in this dress right now just like we're shaping in butterfly so i place my tape on the shoulder and i'll mark 13 inches for the sleeve opening and that is where i will take my bust measurement so the next i will take is my waist line okay i'll mark my waistline mark my hip line then locate the center front because that is where we are going to take our quarter measurement so i'm trying to extend the lines to touch the center front so on the 13 inches line i will take my bust circumference divide by four then add two inches to it on my waistline i'll take my waist circumference divide by four add two inches to it then i'll connect it on my hip line i'll take my hip measurement divide by four add two inches to it because i need ease to this dress then i will also go to the hem line and measure what i have on the hip line the whole of it 14 inches so i'm going to shaping it now then on the hem line i'll place the 14 inches and mark a straight line from that point to meet with my hip line so this is a simple butterfly shaping that is what i'm doing right here so I will repeat the same exercise on the other side. So I'll go over to the mesh. Right now I'm done stitching from that point. Okay, I top stitched right here. And I took the chalk markings. But when I, when I got here, I realized there's a slit here. Okay, so there's a slit. Just come down by half an inch after the, um, one inch after the joining and top stitch. So we we'll have a slit at the down area. So I repeated the same thing for this part as well. So I believe this class was helpful to you. So you learned a new thing. I believe so. So if you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day. Like this video. Share to family and friends. Drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you once again. See you in the next class. Bye.